Uh, let's go ahead and get into the second half here. Uh, Sarah Morgan with Morgan Farms. Uh, please join me in welcoming Sarah. We'll have a six minute presentation and Q&A after that, all right? All right. Hello, thanks for having me today. I'm Sarah Morgan and along with my husband um, and our four year old, we uh, run a farm and um, I am a vendor at the Sedalia Farmers Market and we are hopefully expecting a child um, again in August as well. Um, so my husband and I both grew up um, on the farm and um, we both love the farm, that's what we did. I grew up in South Dakota, my husband in Ohio, um, when I, in 2008 when we got laid off um, from economic stuff is when I decided that um, it was now or never and to see what 998 miles in between uh, that would be a good a option or not to continue. So we've always farmed um, and done things together. Uh, once we decided that we were gonna try to make things work, um, my husband had already bought 200 acres out here, and we decided at that point we would go ahead together and come out here and farm by ourselves. Um, we're 600 miles from my parents, 608 miles from his parents, we were here by ourselves, we were 20 years old, and we came out here to do what we'd always dreamed of. Um, doing that, we used one tractor for everything. It is now, what I've always called it my girly tractor because I have short legs, and I can adjust the seat to actually make things work easier. Mm -hmm. um, it's now our kids' tractor. It works really good for our kids as well. Um, when we first started, um, we started out here in a tent, and that's how we came out here. We upgraded the next year to that, oops, sorry, maybe I turned it off. Um, the sleeper or on that semi there. And the following year we went to that camper. Um, the next year we got a farm that actually had a house on it that we rented. And then four years into it, we got this house uh, that we live at now and where all of our um, livestock is and we farm around this place and everything. Um, and that's where we are now. Um, that next year, my father-in-law didn't like that we had 10% of our ground in between our fields that didn't have anything in. We brought a 90% tillable farm and there's a waterway. So he delivered us some heifers so that we could have some cows. That's how we started having livestock at our place um, is the bloodlines that my father-in-law had from out in Ohio brought out here and we started our um, livestock here. During the summer they graze in between the fields and um, we have paddocks there and um, move them around. And then in the fall, as soon as we get done harvesting around there, we open up the gates and they graze our fields all winter long. It's also where we cab at in the spring um, and they really love the springtime um, when, especially in the soybean fields, they will eat the soybean fields much more than they will eat the corn fields, but they have um, 307 acres that they roam, and like I said, we only have 20 cows um, through the winter. Um, when we go ahead and wean the calves in the fall time, we pull them just so that we can make sure they have the best nutrition through the winter, make sure they get through without no problems. Then they also go out on grass for the summer, um, and they are supplemented corn that we have grown and grind for them. You can see they get to be great, good pets and they often lick our hands. Um, and my little boy is out checking those. Um, we're, we're trying to decide which calves we're gonna go to butcher the next day. And this here calf is the one that went the next day out of that picture. Um, and that's where we get all of our um, animals that we sell at farmer's market um, is the calves that we've raised then. Okay, so um, life between the two barns. That is where our sows live. Like it said, when we went um, from having livestock, we didn't have another option of where to go. So our sows live between our two barns, and then we go ahead as they um, are just about ready to farrow, um, like this one here, we call her half and half. Um, she, as you can see, she's starting to get um, a bag on the bottom. We go ahead and put them um, in crates, so that I can better um, take care and manage each one. They're in the crates for um, 
right about a month. We try to about a week before we think they're going to have their babies, and then 21 days um, that they have their babies on them, and we go ahead and pull the babies, and um, then the moms get turned back out with the boards, and in three days they will get rebred um, to have another batch of babies. Um, this here is the farmer's market is where I get to um, bring the farm to the public. Um, I was very glad when I got to find the farmer's market because I was able to um, do what I love and be on the farm next to my husband and my kids every day, but to bring our hard work to the farmer's market every day. So at the farmer's market, I have beef and pork, and then after we get the um, meat back from the butcher, I also get the fat back. I render that down, and we have soap that we have at the farmer's market as well. Um, so 88% of our soap is all made from the animals that were born, bred, and raised on our farm. We um, do all the farm work as well. Um, my little boy and I typically do um, field work, planting of beans. My husband doesn't think I do straight enough rows for corn, but we do all the beans. Um, and then my husband does um, any spraying that we need, the fertilizer, and we so we do the pre-work for the field work. He does the spraying fertilizer. We do the planting and finish work um, while he's getting the next one ready. Then when it comes to harvest season, my little boy and I will combine um, and then when we're combining beans, you can only combine beans in the afternoon when they are dry enough. So um, we often plant wheat. So my little boy and I will plant wheat in the morning, combine beans in the afternoon, while my husband is hauling um, and emptying semis for us. Uh, so this is a little bit of all of our everyday stuff. We haul a lot of stuff because we're very cheap and we don't like to pay people to do it. So. Um, We've hauled all of our equipment out from Ohio, South Dakota, um, and different places where we've bought it. We haul it all with our nice red, white, and blue that's getting a new engine today because the other one's not no good no more. Um, we also put up all of our grain bins at our place um, and do everyday maintenance and stuff. Um, like I said, my the red, white, and blue semi, the engine's blown in it, and my husband is re-putting in a new engine today. Um, so we can get that back on the road. We pretty much do all the um, stuff right there on the farm. Back to the baby pigs. Um, these are the babies in the crates. Um, I have a bloodline that came out of South Dakota, and I typically have large litters. Um, an average weaning rate um, nationwide is 10 babies per litter. I have as guilt, so first time mom, my sows tend to have 13 to 15 babies per litter and keep them. The only way I can do that is by using crates because I can make sure all the babies are getting what they need and individual attention for that mom. Some sows require a lot of feed, some sows don't. Um, but you can see um, the baby pigs and the large number of babies we often have. And my current like weaning rate is at least 12 or better, even with gilts and stuff. Um, and I can only accredit that to <laughs> being able to use crates. And when I started with the pigs, my little boy was only 18 months old. I had to have a way that I could take care of the sows if the sow needs help having babies. And my little boy was safe. And the crates allow me to do that. Like I said, they're only in there for about a month. Um, if the babies grow really good, I'll wean them sooner. But um, I need to make sure the babies are eaten well enough before we wean them. These are what weaned babies look like. They're gonna be somewhere between 15 and 20 pounds, typically three weeks old. Um, and at 14 days is when they start getting the starter feed in the crate um, to make sure they're eating well. We cut all the boars um, when we wean them to make sure that uh, the meat quality is good for when we butcher them. In about six months, six to seven months, is when we will have a finished pig that weighs 250 to 280 pounds. Um, these ones here are all in my kind of teenage years. Um, they are just from wean, and then these ones are bigger. These two bottom pictures are when they are getting to be about the 120, 150 pound range. When they get to that weight, they um, like to dig out and get out really bad. So we have what we call fat floors. Um, they are grates or wood 
um, with a building on half, open on half. During the summer, you can see the sides go up so that they get complete air circulation on the top. It's three feet off the ground so they get air circulation always on the bottom. In the summertime, they have sprinkler systems, so they just sit in there under the water and cool off. In the wintertime, everything closes up, and then we put straw around the bottom. Depending on their size, if they're too small, they need to stay warmer. So we cover three quarters of the front with plywood and then put mud flap doors on it so it stays nice and warm in there. They can still come out and eat. Um, we grind all the feed that we feed them, and it's all grown by us right there on the farm as well. And they're on the fat floors until um, either butcher or we go ahead and pull them for gills. Um, and they have, during the winter, they have a water tank because we can keep a heater in there. During the summertime, um, they have a water that's a self water that's hooked to like garden hose line, um, the same as their drip line to make sure they always have as fresh water and as much water that, as they want. Um, and our newest addition is we um, are in the process of getting a new farrowing system. Um, my husband and our helpers are tearing down this building from over by coal camp and moving it to our place to have a place for um, up to 30 sows at a time. But this will allow me to move sows in and out much easier. Um, and then as well as for weaning, I can take two of the moms and babies and go ahead and put them in one crate. Um, and this will be the nursery end right in the back and they'll get to be inside for another month. So. Um, what this does, and this is something I've wanted since the beginning, I'm going to call it my hog Hilton. Um, this is going to keep the babies warm in the winter, but here in the summertime when it's so hot and so humid, the moms really struggle at being able to cool down enough. So this is going to allow us to put a small air conditioning unit in there just to drop the humidity so they don't get so hot and stressed during the summertime. And like I said, they'll just be in here for about a month, and then they'll go right back out um, to get in the heat and breed again. Um, and the thing about doing this is we can do the whole entire building at one time and pull all the babies at one time so they come back in and cycle at the same time to have babies. Um, and like I said, for us, we sell both on the farm and off the farm. We sell a whole beef, um, half beef, whole and half pigs and if you have like a, you want to smoke a pig or something like that, we'll work with you on doing that as well. But primarily we sell um, with the Sedalia Farmers Market, who has been great for me um, to be able to meet people in the public and just share, um, you know, today's agricultural business with people who don't necessarily get that opportunity. And so that's kind of our, our thing. <laughs> Questions for Sarah? Yeah, what percent of your um, kind of harvest do you sell in the farmer's market and do you sell other? Okay, so um, for as far as meat goes, I sell probably 95% of my meat through the Sedalia Farmer's Market. Um, obviously, and that's part of the reason why I started at market is we obviously have a higher production amount than we could ever sell. Um, and that's how it started. I originally started just selling whole and half pigs at the farmer's market. But there's such a large demand that people just need for supper or, you know, just want for a little bit for their freezer and stuff like that. So that's why we started doing the um, for sale meat, which has the inspection stamp just the same as what anything at the grocery store has. Um, so it could go into any store, any local business, or that, and be sold the same way. Um, and for me, it's been great because I've been able to help so many more people. Um, I would say right now, um, until we get like the larger farrowing house going up and stuff, even like as far as my pigs go, I sell probably 70% of all the pigs that we've raised on the farm have been sold in some way through the market as feeder pigs, as butcher pigs, as custom butchers, or I've butchered and then sold the meat off of them. Um, the beef end, we had 17 um, babies this last year, and I think we ended up taking six to the stockyards is 
what we took out of the um, first round once we finally got um, them big enough here and everything. I think six is all we took. The rest um, I sold or we butchered for ourselves for market. So only have like 400 questions. Okay, well, go ahead. I'll try and get them on the so top. So first of all, you either are independently wealthy or this is going great because you've got so much equipment. It's incredible. You've got a tractor and a combine, these houses and a tractor trailer. I mean, it must be going pretty well to, to, to be able to finance all this. Well, um, my husband and I have worked incredibly hard. We have not um, had the opportunity like some people who have had things given to them or that. It, my husband had um, started a lime spreading business back in Ohio when he was 18 or when he was 16, which is what originally funded for um, getting the 200 acres. Um, from there, it has been um, almost all of our equipment, everything you see here, was bought with blown engines, blown motors, bad transmissions, and um, even when we were just living in the sleeper of a semi. We had no shock, we had no nothing, and the transmission went out of the tractor in January when we were trying to work ground. And we um, we farm everywhere from Lincoln to Windsor, up to where we live, a little bit farther um, north. But lots of people know us because <laughs> we're very different. But we um, pulled under a great big tree and we used hoist and stuff. We trained transmission out in the middle of nowhere. We pulled it out ran up to South Dakota and Meyer's salvage yard where there's all kinds of parts for us and we changed transmission out in the middle of nowhere in the middle of January. Uh, like I said, we do things a little bit different than a lot of people um, and so a lot of people know us. <laughs> Some good, not so bad. Um, so we, you know, we try really hard to do everything ourselves. Um, we've bought old equipment, we've used, um, and my husband loves auctions and finding a good deal he um we've also bought some ground we now own 468 acres um and we farm right around 3,000 acres um and so it's not just there what we own we have like i said the majority um, of it's rented my parents have also come down and bought some ground out of south dakota so we custom farm 250 right under 300 for them um as well um, that someday will be ours. We, when we also came out here, we had um, bought ground with the complete intent to farm it. We worked with lots of realtors here in Sedalia. A lot of them know us because they've showed us all kinds of ground and stuff like that. But um, when they've had a buyer, they also know that we, um, what we've paid for it. And so we've bought and sold some ground um, to get where we are. Um, we wouldn't sell anything we have now. We've put together four farms to get what we have, um, where that brick house is. And we've got um, three hundred, just the 468 right there in one location. And we own another 30 acres on half with my parents. Um, and so we've worked really hard to put all that together in one location. So we wouldn't necessarily have to be traveling the world anymore. Um, but that was part of, of buying and selling some farm ground. And then we rented it right back from the guy that bought it from us because that's what we wanted to do was farm it anyway. We weren't looking at selling it. So does that help answer some of that? Yeah, that's just for its next question. Okay, uh, that uh, works. I just want to make sure I completed one at a time. Okay. Somebody else has another, but they come right back. Okay, nobody go. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so you have two basic operations, right? You you, you do a traditional farming, which sounds like corn and soybeans in this part. Yep. You where you. Um, tenant farm for other folks and for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then you have the business of Morgan Farms, and I, by the way, I've had it, it's wonderful, it's uh, unbelievably great. Uh, but, uh, so is that a is that a, a good business, a great business, is it an okay, it's a hobby, when the other one, we, we, we're, we kind of feed the bulldog, or is Morgan Farms, what, what I know of Morgan Farms in the farmer's market, is that a viable, good business as well? Yeah, and um, if we had just my house and the five acres, um, I would say that it was very much a viable business because if you look at it as in a, that standpoint, if I would break that out of there, um, my house is where I do all my soap and I sell all my meat or store it all. 
but also my 50 sows and my farrowing cows and my all my feeders are right there on that five acres. And so um, I would definitely say it would be a viable option for me. It never was our first um, idea to do the farmer's market and that kind of stuff. Um, but And we've had to make that choice, especially this last summer when it was really wet. I had to say, I won't be at market because it, I will lose $1,000 a day by not cutting beans today. It's an option that I have to make to whether we're going to get these beans planted or not. Um, and like I said, we are very family run. It's just my husband and I and my brother-in-law, and we got one hired guy. Um, and so the miles that we are spread apart, um, it's definitely kind of two businesses, like you said, um, but we are very much, um, we don't like to sit still too much. <laughs> so, well, I don't really like to sleep very much. Either, but, <laughs> well, don't so, ask me how much I sleep. Uh, uh, that's not um, very much. So sometimes. I'm going to go to question three. So um, uh, the farmer's market in Sedalia is uh, your sole outlet for, the, for, for, for a lot of your product. Mm -hmm. is, that, that would concern me if I were you because I don't think the farmer's market is going anywhere, but if they were to go somewhere, I mean, you're, you're you, yeah, you, you know, have you looked at other farmer's markets or other outlets? Yeah, I did the Warrensburg farmer's market. Um, it wasn't as strong and they brought in more um, vendors. I'll say that. I've done the Coal Camp Farmers Market, um, and I personally decided to discontinue because I was directly competing with one of our other vendors at Sedalia Market, and that was kind of their home area, and I didn't really want to step on their toes too much. Um, and it kind of comes down to the point that uh, I only have so many hours in the day, and especially during planting and harvest time, I know where the main dollars that are going to pay the thousands of dollars of bills at the end of the year where they're coming from and I have to focus on that first. Um, and so it kind of goes both ways um, and I guess if it would ever come to a point where the Sedalia market wasn't strong enough for me, I would probably continue um, you know, some sales with the customers that I've built a relationship with but it wouldn't be a make or break thing for us. Um, we're, we feed out the pigs, we feed out the cows so that we have another option of an avenue to feed cheap corn to. We raise, you know, thousands and thousands of bushels of corn. Corn right now is not worth a whole lot, but there is an option and the avenue for us to gain profits by selling the beef and the pork. The pigs have a quick turnaround of six months and we get great fertilizer out of it. That fertilizer goes right back to our fields to raise more corn. So for us, um, it's a the market is a value-added agricultural product for me. Um, it's still part of the farm is still what I am and still what I do, but it is not, you know, by any means the top part of what brings us the most money. Um, we still got many bills to pay out of those fields. <laughs> and I love it, don't get me wrong. If you have another question, we'll be right back. We're gonna get hurt right back. So I actually have two okay. quick ones. When did you hire your hired hand and where do you uh, process the meat? Where do you put it? Okay, that's a very good question. Okay, so all of our help so far has come out of Ohio. My uh, husband's friends that he grew up with, like I said, my brother-in-law, um, my hired guy was in a very tough situation um, going through a divorce. Um, he needed a somewhere to go just to kind of clear his head and think about things. And he also had two kids. Um, so it originally started with um, just somewhere to go to clear his head. And then that was right at the beginning of harvest time. And it was also the time when I found out that I was pregnant with our first son. And so it kind of just came about. It wasn't really, um, it was a huge stress at the time. How are we going to pay for this? How are we going to support another basically full family, a guy with two kids? Um, and we just barely getting by ourselves. Um, so it was not really a business plan type thing. It was more.
more of a circumstance of trying to help out somebody. The butchering part for the farmer's market. You must have a for sale stamped product to sell at the farmer's market. Um, I have been choosing to do a USDA stamp, which allowed me to sell across state lines. Means that we have um, the family in South Dakota and Ohio, it allowed me to sell to our family and sell to those people out of state. And whenever we traveled, I could take the meat with me and take it there. Um, the butcher that I was using for that is currently discontinuing butchering, um, custom butchering or for sale labeling at this time. Um, and so I've had to look into other options. Um, my other butcher that I had been using just for custom butcher and um, has been a great supporter for me. Um, he's bought a lot of my pigs. I just brought him four pigs last week <coughs> and myself um, is Kemp's outside of town out here. Um, they have become state inspected now, not USDA inspected, but state inspected so that I can have meat at market. They didn't do it just for me, but, <laughs> but they are now um, inspected for sale. Um, and so now I'm unable to sell out of state. If like my family came down here and bought for me, um, they can go ahead and buy from me here and take it out of state, but I cannot sell from here and deliver um, out of state. Does that help with your question? And then if you are looking at that type of thing, um, Powell's in Clinton is USDA inspected. Hetherington's is um, for sale stamped state inspected. Um, and then Alma Meats is USDA inspected as well um, for other options. Uh, that's kind of what I know on those ones. Other questions? My turn. Go ahead. Uh, I'm here all so day until they tell me to is the Conventional wisdom is that you can't do this because of, like you have to raise hogs by the thousands, right? And so to tell us like the, the economics of how you in fact can do this. Okay. Um, well, a lot of people have always told both me and my husband all of our life you can't do that. <laughs> And we're really stubborn and we're really determined. We say, oh, but we will. Um, <laughs> so how it kind of started was um, my parents, uh, when I was little, grew up uh, raising 250 head of pigs, fair to finish, back in the 80s and the 90s when it was a common thing to do, not a commercial thing to do. Um, when the prices crashed, they sold out. Um, and so I always grew up with them. I have little pictures where... I was in the crates with them. I just played with all the baby pigs. It's something I always grew up doing. I just knew what it was. My husband had no experience with pigs, um, but he was very um, irritated at the extremely low corn prices about three years ago. And that's how we started um, with a few gilts that we started and went ahead and finished them out. And then we got boards in the other bloodlines out of South Dakota brought them down and bred them and started having actually farrowing and stuff here on the farm. I wouldn't say that um, if you had to go out and buy your corn, you had to go out and buy your beans, you had to go out and buy your straw, you had to go out and buy all that, it would not be nearly as economically beneficial because for us it's cheap to do because we raise the straw for bedding. We raise the corn for feed. We raise everything right there, and that manure for us, which is a headache to a lot of people, what are you gonna do with all this manure? What are you gonna take all this? We've got endless number of acres to put that on. So for us, everything about the pigs, and for the cows as well, is beneficial to us. Um, and also, knowing your markets, um, just like anything else, knowing when to sell, when not to when to contract, um, know your best season for selling them, and know that certain number of the months, there's no way I will butcher anything because I can get more by taking them to the yards. Um, and that's just how it is because they, if you look at how things used to be, they're the pigs that are born in November and December, and you lose the most in those cold months, and there's a shortage, and that's just how it is. And so, as well as it's also for show people, they um, with help whole breeding to get the piglets bred for um, January delivery. So there's a gap in there. 
um, and they are paid more. You can take in full grown sows and boars and all your coals at that amount of time and get more money than you can out of butcher some of the rest of the year. But you have to know that and you have to be able to be willing to hang on through those other months and feed them to get that. And like us, you know, whenever you harvest, you always have spilt grain, you always have loss here or there. Um, and that's where our cows come in and opening up the field and letting them range for this winter. They clean that up. We have less, uh, you know, problems in the spring with volunteer stuff. We get that fertilizer spread already out there naturally. Um, you know, and the biggest thing for the cows, they aren't confined all winter long to a muddy lot. It might be muddy out in the field, but they're getting their exercise. They are going out there to scavenge for that feed. Um, and that helps with easier birth in the spring because they've continued to have their muscle growth. They're, you know, they aren't just laying around and being lazy. Um, and if they want to go eat corn, they can go eat corn for some reason. When you have cows out on the field, they love soybeans and they love soybean straw. If you would bale it and put it in their pen, they will eat very, very little of it and they don't even like to lay on it. You can bale corn stalks and give them and they'll eat, but soybeans, not so much. But they will spend way more time in the soybeans, probably 60-70% more time in the soybeans than they will ever in the cornfield when they're out grazing. Why? I don't really know. but. Um, so for us, that's kind of how it works, I guess. Sarah, I'll ask you last question. Okay. <laughs> we had you up there a long time, and I can probably listen to you talk about your operation. <laughs> no, you, you're doing great. I can. I got more questions for you later. Okay. Um, but uh, as a true gate to plate operation, a real family family run uh, operation, what can we as a community do to help? Well, a big thing is is to be open minded because a lot of people have a negative perception about today's agriculture and um, about the negativeness about, you know, just everything it takes to run an operation um, now compared to what it was. And so that's one thing I just love about the Sedalia Farmer's Market. It gives me that opportunity to share. Um, you can go to my Facebook page, um, and there's cards on the table, Morgan Farms, and I try really, really hard to post on there everything that we do from farming to baby calves to baby pigs when we're weaning um, all those things um, the good sides and the bad side because it's not appropriate to say hey you know everything's always perfect um there's a lot of bad days <laughs> and so i feel like somebody that you could have access to come see at the market somebody you could come talk to and say okay so what's your opinion on this how do you feel about this is this really true or not so much? Um, and so I feel like just being open and sharing um, like this or at the farmer's market or on Facebook page and stuff like that, just being open-minded to how everything is done. I don't do everything right. There's a million other ways to do it. This is just what works for us right now. In five years, I might say, well, you're really young. You didn't know what you're talking about. Um, but for right now, this is what's working for us, and we're just trying to make the most of what we have. And um, like I said, we're pretty stubborn, and we try really hard to be like, we're gonna, if we want to put do that, we're going to do it. We might make a lot of mistakes, but we're going to do it. <laughs> so um, just sharing and being open. Um, like I said, we do half um, beef, half or half beef, pork and beef, and holes on both, custom butcher. Um, and if you have special requests, like for a picnic or stuff like that, we're happy to do pork loins or, you know, roasts and stuff like that where you can take it. Um, and being that it's all inspected, it's safe to take to a chef or anything like that for a school event or something like that because um, technically <coughs> you need to have uh, inspected meat to do that. Um, and so we can, we're able to offer that. and. Even if you want to do a whole pig butcher for something like that, we can do that through Kemp's and I um, will go ahead and do the whole pig cost to you, um, but to get that stamp so it can be legal um, processing and everything for you. Um, so just sharing, I guess, is the best way. And thank you for listening to me forever today. <laughs>